In this video, we are going to discuss how to use the definition of division to solve for many problems that you'll encounter when talking about quantum mechanics, the nature of light, and other problems involving energy. Though by college, most students think that they understand division, sometimes using it in specific contexts requires a bit more of a specific discussion of its usage and a reminder about how we can use this concept that we learned so long ago to solve for problems in our chemistry classes now. I want to start this video by talking about the types of problems where this is going to come up. So take a moment and read through the problems on this slide. All of these problems require this problem solving technique. The next couple of slides will help this concept be significantly more intuitive when you come across it in these types of problems. So we're not going to solve all of these in this video. I just want you to get a sense for where, where you should think about using this idea. In its simplest description, division is the concept of distributing a group of things into equal parts. So if we have eight pizzas and we want to distribute them across four, pizza, or four people, that gives us two pizzas per person. Similarly, you could think about there being eight pizzas and everyone gets two. How many people are there? Well, there would need to be four people. Eight divided by two is four. Now, we could switch this concept a bit instead of division to be about multiplication and say that if we had four people and each one had two pizzas, how many pizzas do we have? And there'd be eight. All of these are different ways of looking at the exact same concepts of multiplication and division. But how can this be expanded to account for those energy problems on the last slide? After all, eight pizzas being split among four people seems to be a bit more complicated than the problem, or seems to be a bit more simple, excuse me, a bit more simple than the concepts on this slide. Let's look at another example um, involving food and one that generally we can kind of get without using an equation and use this to bridge into those harder chemistry examples. If we have a bag of candy that has a thousand calories in it, and each piece of candy has 10 calories, then how many pieces of candy are there in the bag? Pause the video and think about the answer and then think about how you got that answer. Try to write a formula for it that we can then take into other problems. And come back when you either have it or you're stuck and need some help. Often when I ask this, um, people in class will shout out 100. And that's right, but we wanna think about where that 100 comes from so that we can use that same method for our harder problems. So we got this by taking our total energy, our thousand calories, and dividing by the number of calories of each one. In other words, we took the total energy divided by the energy of each thing. And then when we did that, we got our number of things. So 1,000 calories divided by 10 is 100 calories. Now, in this case, we're doing it with energy as related to food and pieces of candy, but the process would be the same if we were talking about, say, a laser pulse rather than a bag of candy. And rather than pieces of candy inside the laser pulse, we had photons with a particular energy. It would be the exact same process. Let's take a very similar version of this question, which uses multiplication instead. Look at the problem on this slide. Think about how you would solve it and perhaps write an equation based on it. Here we have each piece of candy has 20 calories and there's 100 pieces of candy in the bag. So in order to know how many calories are in the whole bag, we would multiply those. Or in other words, to get our total energy, our energy of our bag, then we would take our number of things, our 100 pieces, and multiply by our 20 calories. Let's do an example problem that is similar to the problems on the second slide that I showed you. So these are a little easier than those. 
Um, but this will allow us to get into the same concepts as the ideas on those slides and start to enter into the world of chemistry with these concepts um, without using things that maybe you haven't covered at all yet in your chem classes or you've never seen before. Here we have a laser that has a pulse with a total energy of 1.5 joules. So that's going to be analogous to our 2000 bag of cal or 2000 calorie bag of candy. And then each photon has an energy of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's similar to our 10 calories per piece of candy example. How many photons are in the pulse? So take a moment, pause the video, and use what we learned in our candy example to try to solve this problem. Try it on your own and then come back and listen to my solution when you think you have it or if you're stuck. Much like the candy example, we want to use our definition of division to solve for this. So we're going to take the amount of total energy and divide by the energy of each thing to solve for the number of species, in this case, photons. So we'll take our 1.5, our total energy, and divide it by our 3.6 times 10 to the ne negative 19th, or our energy of each photon. And this gives us our total number of photons. This is a really important step in a lot of the problems that you're going to run across in your quantum mechanics problems. You'll add on to this a bit by solving for energy of the photons in different ways, or perhaps solving for the total energy in different ways. But this is one very important step that we can talk about now in relationship to what we were able to do with a bag of candy. Let's do one more example. Again, we're gonna do a slightly modified version of the questions that I gave you in that second slide that you'll run across in your chem classes. I want to avoid any material from quantum mechanics that you might not have covered yet. So we're gonna just stick with the concept of using multiplication and division to interconvert between total energy, energy of one, and number of things. Here in this problem, we're given the number of photons and the energy of each photon. So this is just like our candy problem, where we knew how many candies and we knew the number of calories per candy. Take a moment, try to solve this on your own using what we did in our candy problem, and then come back to see if you got the right answer or if you got stuck. So here we're gonna take our total energy and that's what we're solving for. So we're gonna do that by taking our number of things times by our energy of each, just like we took our number of candy times by the calories in each candy. This gives us 4.15 times 10 to the 18th photons times by 3.61 times 10 to the negative 19th joules to give us our total energy of 1.5 joules. In this video, we discussed using our definitions and intuitive understanding of multiplication and division more purposefully to solve for quantum problems involving total energy, energy of a photon, and the number of photons. Whenever we have two of these three, we can solve for the other. As you move into chemistry, you'll learn a lot of new topics in quantum mechanics and beyond where you're gonna wanna be able to use this skill. For example, we might give you the wavelength or frequency, and then you're gonna use that to solve for energy of a photon, which then you can use to solve a problem just like what we did here. So please come back and visit this video whenever you need to revisit this topic.